With the new month comes a new Jojolian chapter, and in this chapter, we continue with the Endless Calamity arc. This was another enjoyable chapter which has continued to display unsolved mysteries, which annoyingly still remain unsolved by the end of this chapter. First of all, thank you so much for clicking this video and checking it out. Secondly, I mentioned this on my community tab on my channel, plus also over on Twitter, but I recently bought a brand new, decently high-end PC. This change meant I had to transfer over all my stuff, reinstall programs and generally secure my files and editing software, templates, etc. This took a little bit of time to get everything sorted, but I'm now back up and running. Because of all that, unfortunately, that is why this chapter review is late, and for that, I apologise. But I hope you still enjoy the review regardless. If you're new to the channel, press that subscribe button below the video to receive regular uploads, and to keep up to date with my ongoing stand analysis series, chapter reviews, and other videos. Let me know what you think of this video by pressing the thumbs up button down below, as all the feedback I can get helps inform me if I'm doing a good job or not. Moving on, let's get straight into the chapter. First off, I just want to display this awesome cover for this month's edition of Ultra Jump, which displays Josuke and Yasuho front and centre in celebration of the 25th Jojolian volumes release in Japan. There's also an isolated version with just the Jojolian artwork present. I love this artwork so much I actually made it my phone's lock screen background. Now then, moving on to the chapter cover, we see a similar layout with Josuke's Dragon Balls, I, I mean soap bubbles, I, I mean spinning lines, and I don't know whether it's just me who noticed this, but Josuke's pose on this cover reminds me quite a lot of Jotaro's finger point pose from part 3. And since part 8 Josuke is a fusion of Josefumi and Kira, this makes sense because Kira is Holly's son in this universe, just like Jotaro was Holly's son in the original universe. I really like this reference by Araki, especially since it's not a straight copy of Jotaro's pose. Araki made this pose unique to Josuke whilst also having it be a throwback, which I really enjoyed seeing. This cover page also reminds the readers about Josuke's soap bubble's true identity, as the text reads, those bubbles are lines and they spin. There is still untapped potential with Josuke's quote-unquote soap bubbles so far, considering they seem to utilise the power of the spin from Steel Ball Run. However, these lines spinning is executed subconsciously by Josuke. He was originally completely unaware of these soap bubbles' true identity until Rai Mamazuku explained it to him a few chapters ago. The beginning of the chapter itself deviates a little from where the last chapter left off. The viewpoint shifts to 10,000 metres above the ground, following an unnumbered flight which heads toward Chitose Airport on its usual flight course. However, for unknown reasons, whether it be to a change in air pressure and cold weather as the plane descends, or a failure in keeping up maintenance standards, high pressure air began leaking within the plane's pipes. These pipes were close to the outside of the plane, right near to the lock which holds the panel for the evacuation slide. This evacuation slide panel is almost 5 feet long and weighs about 3 kilograms. Not enough to kill someone if it falls on them. However, this panel is falling rapidly from an initial altitude of 10,000 meters in the air. From that height, it would gain a lot of speed on the way down. And if this panel landed on someone going that speed, it would no doubt kill them instantly. This odd but strangely meticulous chain of events leading to this panel coming loose couldn't have been anything other than a flow of calamity. And as we see on the next page, the panel is heading straight for the Higashikata house. Will this be the calamity that befalls Yasuho, who has been put straight up to the top of Toru's list of who will die first? We return to ground level and see Joshu's attack on Yasuho fall short as he trips over the new Rokakaka plant pot. When the last chapter came out, Araki did a great job in creating tension between Joshu and Yasuho. The craze that Joshu entered looked and felt just like a calamity was coming for Yasuho. As soon as she had been moved to the top of the Calamity's hit list, Joshu attacked, confirming to the readers that Joshu became the Calamity that would end Yasuho's life. We know so far that these Calamities are fated to kill their target. It may not happen instantly, but it will happen sometime within the person's life. So far, we know that when new people are added to the top of the list, the order of death changes. The person who was at the top of the list previously would now become the number 2 person on the list elongating the time it takes until the calamity reaches them. Since Yasuho has been added to the top of the list, this would slightly elongate the lives of the other people on the so-called list. 
This is the kind of information I'm waiting to be explained before I do a stand analysis on the wonder of you. However, I am really excited to get enough information to finally create that video. Joshu's attack failed due to the Nurokakaka pot being in the way, leading for the flow of calamity to transfer over to the plane's loose panel which is currently now hurtling down towards the Higashikata house. Because the previous attack failed, a new attack is already incoming as Yasuho remains at the top of the list. In my honest opinion, Wonder of You is almost impossible to defeat. However, I'm beginning to realise it may have one slight weakness. A calamity will befall those who attempt to pursue Toru or his stand. But what happens when multiple people attack him all at one time? Who then gets put to the top of the list? It seems only one person can be killed by the flow of calamity at one time, before it then moves on to the next name on the list. So if two people attacked Wonder of You at once, one of those people would surely suffer the calamity first, leaving the second person being able to attack whilst the first is falling down and dying to calamity. It may be a suicide mission for one of those people, but this may be one of the only ways that Toru could be defeated. Since all the main fighters are in different locations right now, with Josuke being in the TG University Hospital, the Higashikatas being inside the house, as well as Yasuho and Joshu being on the grounds outside the house, Joshu currently being consumed by rage as well, there is currently no way for multiple people to attack Toru or the Wonder of You all at the same time. Although later in this chapter, two certain characters do meet, and this attack I described may be able to be put into action. However, we'll get to that a little later on. These are my current thoughts on how this stand may work from the information we've been given, and also my theory on a possible weakness. As we have seen from previous main villains, even though a stand could have a broken ability and be all powerful, there will always be a weakness somewhere. As we see Joshu tumble, Wonder of You suddenly appears in front of Yasuho. It appears directly above where Toru is hiding within the tree line, which is odd because Wonder of You is still present in the Rokakaka lab as we will see shortly. Though, we have already seen instances where the Wonder of You stand has appeared in front of multiple people, in different places all at the same time. This leads me to believe that there is a main body for the stand which goes around acting as a vehicle to tempt people to pursue it, and then those who are at the top of the kill list will see an illusion of the stand. A little while ago I made a video called The Shinigami Theory, where I theorised that the dark, creepy being that characters saw whilst within the flow of calamity was inspired by the Japanese gods of death named Shinigami. These Shinigami have been described as creatures of darkness, supernatural spirits that invite humans towards death. As I stated in my Shinigami Theory video, certain Japanese literatures based in the Edo period of Japanese history depict Shinigami as beings capable of figuratively possessing a person, leading them to death. In the previous chapter, we saw Toru began hunting down Akefu Satoru with the help of Yasuho's information-based stand. All we know is that Akefu Satoru is a physical being, an actual person that can be seen by non-stand users, indicating that Wonder of You has perhaps possessed Akefu Satoru in some way. We know that it can be seen by non-stand users as the reporter saw him a few chapters back, as well as all the people shown at the exhibition where Akefu Satoru introduced the Lokakaka 6251. This Akefu Satoru on the stage was also shown to be a rock human, meaning that he is a physical being. This means that Toru is using him as the body that appears publicly as the head doctor at the hospital, conveying Toru's messages and acting as the head of the hospital while Toru hides in the background. Toru is the mastermind behind everything. Let me know what you think about this Shinigami theory, perhaps even check out the video I made on it. Keep in mind though that the video is quite on the older side now, and many parts of it have already been debunked by more recent chapters. However, the overarching theory revolved around the Shinigami idea, which could still be the possible inspiration for Toru's stand. The more chapters that release, the more information we get on the stand and its powers, solidifying more and more that it could well be inspired by the idea of the Shinigami, which as far as I can recall, is an idea Araki has not yet tampered with before now. Anyway, since Yasuho is now at the top of the list, the image of Wonder of You has appeared in front of her, indicating she is now very close to death. Speaking through this illusion of his stand, Toru reminds Yasuho that the calamity will come and she will die. This is where we leave the Higashikata house, with no answer as to whether the plane's panel will hit Yasuho or not. However, we do see Holly has been left alone as Nijimura K has received Yasuho's phone call and rushes towards the hidden Rokakaka lab where Josuke is. 
Now, remember how I said at the start of this review that Josuke's pose on the cover reminded me a lot of Jotaro's finger pose from part 3? Well, take a look at K here in this panel. Rather than making a new universe version of Jotaro for the Steel Ball Run universe, Araki split Jotaro's characteristics and personality traits between various other characters. Kirai Yoshikage, Kujo Jotaro, K, and in turn, Josuke. In this panel, we can clearly see traits of Jotaro within Kei's character in the pose and also the badass attitude which shows absolutely no fear or hesitation. Even after Yasuho tells Kei she will enter the flow of calamity and possibly be killed, Kei just continues marching on, aware of the possibilities, but doesn't care. Just like Jotaro put himself through hell to protect his mother in part 3, Kei continues heading towards the enemy whilst feeling no anxiety or fear of any kind, all to save her brother and her mother. These two pages have proven to me even more that Kei can be a badass and I'm glad that she's finally getting some more screen time after so long of being off screen looking after her mother in hospital. We jump back into the Rokakaka lab where it seems the wonder of Yu is slightly distracted by something. I imagine he can hear Kei talking on the phone to Yasuho as she approaches the room. He turns back to Josuke, probably thinking nothing of the sound he can hear. We then get a scene here which reminds me of Jotaro vs Dio at the end of part 3, where Dio encourages Jotaro to approach him. In the same vein, Wonder of You is encouraging Josuke to approach him, which of course would result in an immediate injury or death to Josuke if he did so. Josuke continues thinking of Rai Mamazuku's final words to him, in which he had described Josuke's soap bubbles as soft, wet lines which are constantly spinning. This is a really interesting panel, as the technique of the stand is now connected directly to the name of the stand, Soft and Wet. It's not terribly often that a stand's name relates to its ability, other than some stands such as Grateful Dead which aged people quickly towards death, or Sex Pistols which was a stand which worked best with bullets and a gun. Josuke makes the daring statement that all this time, since he entered the lab, he has been the one making Wonder of You approach him, rather than the other way around. We get an awesome shot of Josuke as he unleashes his stance punches onto the containers for the liquid version of the Rokakaka fruit, the Lokakaka 6251. Josuke continues to stand there as his stand destroys the vials, to the displeasure of Wonder of You. As Josuke is about to stand on another vial to break it with his own shoes, Wonder of You tells him to stop, explaining that each vial is worth over 200 million yen, and that every one of them had been reserved already for athletes around the world. It explains that the Lokakaka 6251 is a technology that the world needs. Josuke, counteracting the 200 million yen comment, explains his shoes were worth 7,980 yen as he proceeds to crush the vial. The Wonder of You finally begins slightly approaching Josuke. As he draws closer, dodging out the way of all of Josuke's floating bubbles around the room, Wonder of You enlightens Josuke that Yasuho is in immediate danger. This fact angers Josuke so much that he joins his stand in punching the vials, but whilst destroying these vials, something happens. Josuke's throat gets cut. But how? It wasn't an attack on the Wonder of You. It wasn't a pursuit. It was a completely isolated event, which had nothing to do with the Wonder of You. Yet, was it really? We've seen in the past that just thinking about attacking or pursuing the Wonder of You can trigger the ability, so it's possible in his anger that Josuke unintentionally thought about attacking the Wonder of You directly, activating the ability, damaging Josuke. Wonder of You states that if Josuke touches something the Stand or Toru has touched, the flow of calamity will begin attacking him. This indicates that Toru or the Stand had previously touched all these vials within the room. This just adds yet another layer to the broken ability of Wonder of You. This stand seems to be the most powerful stand in the entirety of Jojo so far, but now another way to activate the ability has been added, where if Toru or his stand have touched something and someone else touches that item, they will enter the flow of calamity. Does touching that same item count as an attempt at pursuit? I actually have no idea at this current moment, but we'll find out as the chapters release. Wonder of You still claims Yasuho is at the top of the list, even though Josuke is still currently attacking him. Below Yasuho is Mitsuba for some reason. I would probably have to go back on the story a little bit just to see who was the most recent person to pursue Wonder of You, and it could well have been Mitsuba when the illusion of the Wonder of You entered the house just before Jobin was killed. Jobin's pursuit of the Wonder of You would have moved him up to the number one spot, and since he died near enough instantly, that left Mitsuba as the next top of the list until Yasuho. Other than that, I'm still not too sure how this list works, other than the latest person to pursue Toru or his stand will be put to the top of the list, and will die next. 
This makes sense for Rai, as he was about to inflict a fatal wound to the stand and instantly died due to being put to the top of the list in that instance. Josuke manages to get a swift, hard kick onto the Wonder of You, using his soap bubbles to both do damage to the target and also defend his own bones from being damaged. However, this is a very obvious and desperate attack from Josuke. It seems at this point he has abandoned all hope as nothing he can do seems to work, leading him to a desperate last ditch effort to do some damage to the Wonder of You. As expected, this attack is an obvious attempt at pursuing the stand, resulting in Josuke's spinning line soap bubbles to ricochet back onto his own leg, tearing right through the flesh, knocking him down to the ground. The flow of calamity continues to haunt Josuke as he falls and becomes impaled by a piece of metal that is jutting out from a Lokakaka 6251 container. At least, I think that's what that is. Josuke groans in pain as we see the piece of sharp metal went completely through Josuke's body and out the other side. Suddenly, there is some seemingly cold air which enters the room from an opening in the wall that one of the containers created. As soap bubbles continue to move through the air surrounding the Wonder of You, the cold air is made more and more apparent. Which, if you remember, there is one particular stand which creates freezing gusts of wind. We haven't seen it for a long, long time. In fact, it's been eight years to the month since we last saw it, and we'll find out what stand that is just in the next page. Suddenly, out of this opening in the wall, Born This Way appears alongside its freezing gusts of wind. These gusts completely freeze Josuke's spinning lines into a ball of ice. Because these lines spin at such a fast speed that the naked eye can only perceive them as spherical shapes, the speed of freezing cannot keep up with the speed that the lines spin, freezing them in a solidified spherical shape that we see them in. This indicates to me that the spin is much more powerful in Josuke than it was in Johnny, because when Johnny spun his nails, you could see the spinning lines around the nails, indicating it's going very fast, but not fast enough to be a pure sphere. Whereas with Josuke, the lines are spinning at an insane speed that to the human eye, they become spherical. The winds from Born This Way force the frozen bubbles quickly and harshly towards the Wonder of You. The enemy stand blocks the frozen bubbles with its cane, which ends up actually breaking. If you remember, Born This Way is a stand whose main ability is to constantly and automatically pursue a target until K stops it or until the opening that Born This Way entered through is closed. This means Wonder of You would have to either kill K or close the opening in the wall somehow. We see here that the frozen bubble not only managed to break the Wonder of You's cane, but also managed to slice right through a portion of its head. This is a revolution in battling this stand, as this has not been yet done on screen. Rai got incredibly close, but didn't end up doing damage. This completely shocks the Wonder of You and, in turn, Toru, as we quickly flip back over to see Toru begins bleeding in the same area that Wonder of You was damaged. It's at this point that Toru must be really concerned with what is happening in the hospital. Now, I assume this last bit of text is what the Wonder of You, or Toru, is thinking to himself. After being directly hit by the frozen bubbles, it must have made Toru realise exactly what Rai meant when he was explaining the hidden potential with the bubbles. Wonder of You states, Those soap bubbles just now, inside them, it was just as Rai Mamazuku said. Something Josuke has not realised, and something that can't be seen, is within them. This is most probably a reference to the Zeppeli family's spin technique. This technique was only displayed by a few characters within Steel Ball Run. Since there are 121 years between the events of Steel Ball Run and Jojolian, it's unknown whether this technique is still taught in the Jojolian time period. However, it's pretty obvious that the spin technique is still passed down genetically. Both Josefumi and Kira have the abilities to use the spin, as shown when they themselves created the bubbles with their own individual stands. It's also shown in the past that some stand abilities can be passed down through the family or judging on the techniques that they use, such as Hermit Purple and Jonathan's stand which is very similar to Hermit Purple being manifested within Jonathan and Joseph's bodies respectively due to the power of the Hamon that exists in their bodies. And because the spin is basically the Steel Ball Run Universe's version of Hamon, it's possible that the line ability that manifested within both Kira and Josefumi manifested in them in the first place in the same vein as the Hamon manifested the Hermit Purple stands. If a bloodline is capable of using the spin, perhaps they manifest with the spinning bubble technique. However, these lines seem to spin subconsciously, and Josuke does not know how to properly tap into its power. If he can learn how to use it properly, then it's possible Soft and Wet could perhaps evolve or gain some new hidden power. 
The final bit of text here on this page reads, Soft and wet has something further, in quotation marks. This text kind of says to me that an evolution is coming, similar to how Tusk achieved Act 4 during the final battle in Steel Ball Run. At this point, it's all a guessing game. However, I definitely believe Araki has big things planned for Josuke and his stand. There we have it, the epic conclusion to chapter 103. This chapter set up very well for next month's chapter, creating tension and continuing various mysteries such as the illusions of Wonder Review and the spin technique within Josuke's spinning lines. It's also theorised that Josefumi is part of the Higashikata bloodline, as it was shown on the family tree that there was a branch that went off in a different direction that didn't make it into the Higashikata family tree book. This bloodline that continued off branching on the side could have given birth to the Kujo family bloodline eventually. Another thing to remember is Josefumi did have the Joestar birthmark on his shoulder, just like every Joestar before him. So I firmly believe that Josefumi is distantly related to Kira, and having Josefumi and Kira's similar abilities fused into one could open up for power-ups for Josuke in the long run. Plus, now we know that the Wonder of You can be damaged, and I fully believe that Kei is the one who will help Josuke finally evolve his stand's power, potentially by combining her stand's freezing and pursuit abilities with his soap bubble ability. It might not be an actual evolution like Tusk or Echoes from Part 4, where the stand physically changes, but the abilities combined in a 2 on 1 assault may allow for Josuke to use the frozen bubbles to find new ways to use his abilities to fight the enemy. Of course, we have Born This Way, which is a stand made for Pursuit, versus the Wonder of You, which has the perfect defense mechanism to counteract actions of Pursuit towards it. This battle reminds me of two magnets of the same pole coming together, creating a seemingly invisible force which pushes both magnets away from each other. A Pursuit stand versus an Anti-Pursuit stand. Will this be a never-ending battle? Without Josuke? I would have said yes. But utilising his soap bubbles and creating frozen weapons out of them says to me that this battle may have a clear winner as long as both Kei and Josuke are alive and together. Which brings me back to my worry that I said earlier about a 2 on 1 fight resulting in one of the people dying for the other one to damage the Wonder of You. I really hope Kei doesn't die, but I do have a bad vibe coming from this battle. If she dies however, Holly will still have Josuke to look after her. Kei's only goal is to protect her brother and her mother. If Josuke survives, Kei's brother survives and he can give Holly the Rokakaka, saving her life in the same way. So I believe if Kei does have her final big moment in this fight, creating a massive entryway for Josuke to kill Toru, then it would have been worth it. She could die peacefully knowing her mother and brother would be well. It's just a thought and I hope it doesn't happen because I want Kei to survive, but either way I'm glad we're seeing more of her. Though I say this, I do believe the physical body of Toru will have to come face to face with Josuke at some point. The last time they saw each other, we didn't know Toru was the villain of Part 8, and all their encounters did was create a sense of awkwardness and dislike between the two. Now though, if they came face to face, it'd be a whole different level. To be fair, at this point, Josuke still does not know that Yasuho's ex-boyfriend is the enemy stand user. So until then, I'm pretty sure Josuke will stay in the TT University Hospital and fight the stand alongside K, even in his severely damaged state. I am currently worried for both K and Yasuho, as Yasuho has a 5 foot metal panel hurtling towards her at a great speed, and since she is at the top of the list and is set to die next, I can't see any way that this could be stopped, unless someone new pursues Toru, sacrificing themselves so that Yasuho may live longer. Potentially, K. Also, in my opinion, this still leaves room for Joshu to have a redemption arc. As much as I think he's a slimy creep whose only positive use was restoring Yasuho's body as good as new, he has a chance to make it up to her, sacrificing his life to save her, and at least slow down Toru. If he attacks Toru and puts himself at the top of the list, this would delay Yasuho's death. However, only time will tell. Hopefully, we'll find out some answers to all these situations in the next chapter in January. That's it for now. What did you think of chapter 103? Do you think the wonder of you is broken? Or is it just about right for a main villain's stand? If you enjoyed this video then it'd be great if you could leave a thumbs up on it down below and maybe even subscribe to keep up with regular uploads and stand analysis videos. Thank you for watching, but until next time, Bizarre Star Platinum, out!